Hi everyone, my name is Joel Pereira, Solutions Architect here at Uptime, and today I'm going to show you guys how you can install Uptime's new dashboards. All right, so we're going to focus on two main ones, the first one being the mobile, and uh, the second one being the status map dashboard. All right, now there are a couple of requirements. So the first one being, of course, getting the Uptime monitoring station installed. All right, now the, the second and third thing that you'll need is the Uptime controller which is really the API engine, uh, or rather the, the connector that uh, provides the, up, the new Uptime API. Uh, and I'll show you exactly how to install that. And the, the second one being the Uptime Plugin Manager. All right, now the Plugin Manager, again, all of these are free downloads. Um, but the Plugin Manager will allow us to install the new dashboard, the status map, and the mobile dashboard uh, down below. All right, so it's going to make it a very simple process to get set up and installed. So, how do we do this? All right, so I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, guys, so here we've logged into our new virtual machine where we have a fresh install of Uptime. Uh, hopefully your uh, deployment of Uptime or your install has uh, a few more systems than, than just the, uh, the default one here. Um, but for the purposes of today's demonstration, it doesn't really matter how many systems are added. Uh, what we're gonna do is obviously add the Uptime controller. So we're gonna install this. We're going to install the plugin manager, and I'll show you how to do that from scratch. And then we'll install the two dashboards, and I'll show you exactly how easy it is to get those set up. All right, so first things first, the uptime controller, or the API engine. Now, we're going to install this as an administrator. So just right-click on it. If you're on Windows, obviously, right-click and run as administrator. And then just go ahead and click Yes to allow uh, Windows to do this. Uh, the system that I'm running on right now is uh, Windows Server uh, 2008, uh, and so it has a few extra user permissions and securities that uh, are user, ac user access control, so we'll need to uh, just enable that, uh, the administrator. All right. All right, so the first window that comes up is for the installer, where to, to place the controller. I'm just going to go ahead and click continue. Uh, the port should be standard, 997 is the uh, uptime controller port. And on the next screen here, you can read distinguished name and uh, the key store password. This is for generating the SSL key that the API will use. Doesn't really matter what password you, uh, you use here. All right, so you can just type in anything you want. It won't really be used. It's just used for um, creating the SSL key the first time. Uh, now here, this is where you can configure the controller to go ahead and connect to the database, keeping in mind that the controller doesn't necessarily have to be installed on the monitoring station. You can put it on any server out there. So if it is on another server, you'll need it to, to plug into the uptime database. So by default, it's going to be MySQL. Obviously, if you're using another one, uh, you'll have to uh, uh, configure it for Oracle and SQL Server. All right, now ours is uh, all defaults. So we'll just go ahead and click Continue. And it's going to go ahead and install the uptime controller here. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and continue, and you can hit done. All right, so we've installed the monitoring station. We've installed the uptime controller. We can verify if it's installed by going to Windows Services and going down to the uptime section, or the, the letter U section here in the list. All right, so we can see the agent. Uh, the controller is right here, it is started, and then we have the other three services, the data collector, the database, and the Apache web service, or the web server. All right, so everything's installed. Now the next step is installing the plugin manager. All right, now when you go to our website uh, and you download the plugin manager, it's gonna be in zip uh, for Windows. So I've just extracted it here, and we're gonna go ahead and run the EXED, the executable to install it. All right, so this is the latest version as of uh, right now. And we're going to go ahead. It will automatically pick up uptime installation directory. So we'll just go ahead and click continue. This should be one of the easiest installations uh, pretty much ever uh, that you guys may have installed. All right, so it gives you a few steps. I'm just going to tell you instead of having you read it. Uh, and we're basically going to insert a custom tab here into my portal. And the way we do this is by clicking on config, uptime configuration, and copying and pasting exactly what was in uh, the installer window. All right, the same steps are included right there. Just copy, paste, 
and then uh, click on the update button down below. All right, that's it. You should see an updated uptime configuration uh, line there. Click My Portal, and we have the Uptime Plugin Manager already loaded. All right, so that's two out of four steps that uh, that we've done. So we can tell the installer to uh, complete here. Uh, I've already downloaded these files. These are UPK files or Uptime packages. Uh, they also happen to be uh, zip files as well. But all we need to do is through the UI, go ahead and click Choose File. So we're going to do the mobile dashboard first. This one's the easiest one. Actually, they're both just about as easy. And we're going to click Upload. It gives us a bunch of information. It gives us a list of all the files in the package. But all we need to do is click Install. And bam, there it goes. And it's installed it. You can see it only took like about a second. And uh, it's now installed and ready. All right. Um, you can also install the second one. So we can browse. Click on Status Map Dashboard. Click uh, Upload. And then click Install again. Uh, if you guys haven't done this before, I mean, this is going to be as simple as it gets. All right, you can read the list. You don't really need to. Uh, just go back, uh, and uh, we've actually included a few readmes or a few extra uh, bits of information. You can actually click on these names, and you'll see the readme right here uh, in the list. So all you need to do is click on this web server service, click restart. All right, so now we're restarting Apache, and all the changes that installing these plugins have done, they're not going to go into effect. All right, so we restart that service, go back to mobile, and it should now just work for us. There we go. All right, and it may look a little weird. Obviously, it is a mobile UI, so it may look a little weird if you try to use a regular browser. Uh, but if we try it on our phone, or in this case, uh, a phone emulator, I'm just going to pretend I have a Galaxy S uh, right here, and I just install a little mobile emulator uh, and I'm just going to copy and paste here hit go and now we can see what it will look like in our phone browser there we go all right so this is what it's going to look like when uh, when we actually check this out on our phone all right so we have the mobile UI uh, now that it is available you can just point that URL obviously just the host name port if you're using 999 slash mobile you can uh, Put that public on a public uh, port through your firewall, and then any phone uh, within your um, your business, just give them out that link, and then they can access it on their devices. All right? Fully supports BlackBerry as well as, of course, the uh, the newer smart uh, smartphones out there, like iOS and Android. All right. Now the second one, the status dashboard, status map dashboard. All right. It's already installed. Now all we need to do is enable it, and it's actually running in the background, but all we need to do is put another link right here to configure the status map dashboard, all right? So we come with a built-in wizard, uh, but uh, we won't be able to access it unless we follow these steps under setup right here. And essentially, again, we can just copy and paste, and just like when we configure the plugin manager, we're gonna go over to config, uptime configuration, and then copy and paste. Making sure, of course, that uh, the custom tab that we're doing on my portal, just make sure that, because uh, you can you can name these custom tabs as well as give them an, an ID or a number. Uh, so in this case, plugin manager is number two. You can give it any number you want, as long as you don't give it the same number as something else. All right, so you can have an infinite amount of custom dashboards, sorry, custom tabs under my portal. In this case, we only have two. And we have our status map dashboards tab there. All right, here we go. So now we're uh, here, we're looking at status map dashboards. You can see there's four basic steps. All right, so first is to set up uh, the connection information for the uptime controller. Again, keeping in mind that the, uh, the uptime controller might be installed on another server. In this case, it's not, so the default settings should work. Uh, we can manage background images for our dashboard, and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Uh, and, of course, we can go ahead and create and then manage any existing. So, obviously, we don't have any now or just yet. All right. So, first off, uh, we'll confirm everything's, uh, everything's all right. You can configure the admin username and password. In this case, I know I have another password here. So, go ahead and hit Save. And back there. Manage background images. Very easy to do. Um, but in this case, I don't want to add or delete. We'll just leave whatever's in there. 
and we'll go ahead and create a dashboard. All right. Now, a status map dashboard, the way it works is, um, actually, if I just go back here, create a dashboard, there we go. Uh, the way it works is essentially we have a background image, which, by the way, is fully scalable, so it will just stretch to the browser. All right, and we can literally place little icons, circles and squares, anywhere we want. And each circle or square uh, will be an element in uptime. All right, so we've got our list here. Again, in this case, we only have one element. Hopefully, you guys will have uh, many more. Uh, feel free to just add more, uh, add more systems or devices to uptime. You'll see them here in the list. And then you can add them as a circle or square. Now, there's no difference between a circle or square. It's just a matter of preference for you guys. So we'll go ahead and add this one as a circle, and I can place it here on, um, on let's say, let's say that system there. Because I took, I, if you happen to take a picture of your data center, you can put it in here. You can put each system on, uh, well, right on itself. And essentially, when you uh, save this, right, you can also edit it and remove any of these uh, little uh, icons just by clicking right here. Remove element from that. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and. Uh, add it here, uh, dash, hit save, and then it saved it. And now we can see it down below. All right, now you can have multiple dashboards, multiple different views, multiple different backgrounds. You can uh, do whatever you want. You can go back and edit these things as well. All right, if you want to do that, no problem at all. Um, uh, these, are, these dashboards are saved essentially in an SVG file, which is really just an XML file. So if you want to go ahead and edit this dashboard uh, manually. If you know XML or SVG, feel free to do so. It's just an SVG file stored in, uh, in a saved directory. Once you create these dashboards, what you'll want to do is put them in the interface. All right, so to do that, there's a couple of, of ways, and uh, they're actually listed right down below uh, if you want to go ahead and read them. Uh, but essentially, you can add them. I'm just make this a little bigger here. Text. You can add them to Global Scan, and Global Scan can have one custom tab within it. All right, so you can put one custom tab within Global Scan, but you can put as many as you like under My Portal. All right, keep that in mind. So, if you want to put one under Global Scan, we can do so. Uh, we it actually gives us the text that we need right there, and we're just going to copy and paste this under Config Uptime Configuration. All right, we're going to use this link for this dashboard. You know, keep in mind you might have more than one, right? Because if I go in here and I uh, easily create a uh, new one right here, I'll just pick another background just so uh, you guys can see a difference here. There we go. I'll just put that under uh, let's put that in Nebraska, Denver, I believe. Uh, and we'll go ahead and save dashboard two. Dashboard two, there we go. And it saved it, and now you can see more than one dashboard. All right, we're just going to use this one, the very first one. I like my second one. I use my second one. Easiest way is to paste it right here, and uh, exactly where it says, paste the URL here. Copy. Go over to config uptime configuration, and just paste it. All right, there we go. So we pasted it. If you don't like it to be called my dashboard under the tab, you can change it here. All right, old dashboard, or even better, uh, enterprise dashboard, anything you like. Hit update, and bam, we should have now our custom tab right there under global scan. All right, and I can see this element right now is in an unknown state, uh, and that's fine. Well, most of them are okay. There's just one unknown monitor. All right, uh, this dashboard is all fully open. Uh, the open uh, the source code is fully available on GitHub if you like. It's also available to you. Just feel free to contact us. Um, but we've made it as simple as possible to install and deploy right here. One final thing to mention is that um, if you use uh, other browsers, you might experience some issues. Uh, you'll notice that I am using Google Chrome, and Google Chrome tends to be the, the best browser for this uh, for these uh, dashboards, not because it supports all of the the technologies like uh, SVG and uh, JSON and jQuery and everything that uh, we're using here in the background. If you're using Internet Explorer, you may see um, some issues like this dashboard not coming up. 
it will come up if you open it up in another window. All right, keep that in mind. Um, but it won't work if you're using it within this uh, subframe. Likewise, Firefox does tend to have some problems with SVG. So, you know, feel free to use another browser to create the dashboard in the first place. All right, so Google Chrome is the preferred dashboard. We do prefer right now to use it on a Windows environment. It's not limited to that, uh, but we definitely prefer it uh, over anything. All right, so enjoy and thanks a lot.